Yo, what is going on guys? Jack here, and welcome to episode 57 of our Track 2 to the Top series here with Lewis FC in the English Premier League. Hopefully you guys are good. Today I've got for you a live com against Sunderland in the league. But before that, we've got to talk about the game since the last episode and also the signings. So I have made a few, in fact one addition to the side. Yeah, one addition to the side. I did release a load of whingy free agent players as well recently because they were moaning about training and they weren't on contracts and they were all the leftover young players from years gone by, so that's why there's like a mass exodus down the right-hand side. But in terms of the ins, just one new name. Uh, we've got Suso on loan for the year from Juventus. Going to be training him to play right midfield, but to be fair, he's just a real class player and he's just add some quality to the team that we can perhaps you know tap into and use you can see he hasn't had the best start for us yet but he's only come here recently he's on a 1.3 million pound fee for the loan for the entire year which isn't a bad deal I'm hoping that we're going to make the most of that and he's actually going to perform pretty decent for us especially when you consider that last time he was in the Premier League playing for Newcastle um, he actually did quite a good job before making an 11 million pound move to Juve so anyway, that's the one transfer kind of covered, I guess. But we've got to talk about the fixtures. So last episode was the live com against Stoke. Uh, of course, we won 2-1, a great comeback in the last 10 minutes where we went more attacking and we made the most of it. And since then, I've actually gone back to our attacking groups. And there's one fixture here which we are certainly watching the highlights of. But before that, uh, we did get a few other wins since the Stoke game. The first one actually came against Cardiff. Cardiff were promoted with us last year from the championship. They finished second. Um... I think we drew 5-5 with them last year, which was a little bit bizarre. But this year, you can see Matthew Lewis and uh, Ihe Nacho grabbing two goals apiece. And uh, we ran out 4-2 winners in a really impressive away kind of win. The next result was against Oxford in the Capital One Cup. Oxford being a League One side. And rather embarrassingly, they beat us. Now, granted, I was playing a very rotated side, consisting mostly of players who I either signed around League One or the Championship. But that's not an excuse. 4-0 at home was just shocking. I mean, I guess losing in the Cup isn't the worst thing in the world because it allows me to focus on the league, but to lose 4-0 is just outrageous. Anyway, uh, the next result was a 0-0 draw against Reading. Um, I forgot to talk about this last episode, so I'll talk about it now, but it finished 0-0. Um, and they actually missed a penalty and we had a sending off. So we did it quite well there. The, but the thing I want to talk about is actually the season preview. Because uh, obviously you can see here, Reading predicted to finish 16th. We drew with 0-0. Obviously today we've got Sunderland and we beat Cardiff. So we did pretty well there. Um, but yeah, we're predicted to finish 18th. So the bookies don't think we can stay up. But hopefully we can prove them wrong. Um, but yeah, we drew 0-0 against Reading. And they actually had a penalty which was missed... Uh, and a, we had a sending off and had to hold on towards the end of the game. You can see um, uh, Mijelovic uh, got sent off for a second yellow, and he actually conceded the penalty, but Berahinho missed for them. So that was an okay result in the end, 0-0 at home, you know, going unbeaten. But the next game was the game of the the run, I guess. I wish I'd live con this. It was a win, a 3 0 at home against Manchester United with Matthew Lewis, uh, Harry Yan, and Ihe Nacho grabbing the goals for us. Uh, this first goal has a really big build up, so I'm going to rewind it somewhat and then I'll put it in 3D so you guys can see these goals in all their glory. The third one by Ihe Nacho was a pretty decent finish. But um, yeah, this was a good game. Looking at the stats, you can see we actually, it was it was a 50-50 game, but we had a lot of clear-cut chances despite having less of the ball. But anyway, you can see here, our first goal was quite a good kind of piece of play, just working the ball really nicely and uh, kind of getting it up the field quite quickly to Matthew Lewis to grab the goal. Um, and then from there, we got two more. Now, I did weigh up live coming this, but it was only the fourth league game kind of since the first game of the season. Not only that, but I was watching the film Inception at the same time. And can I just say, I don't often talk about what I do while I play FM, but I'm someone who likes to binge on Netflix and stuff. I'd somehow missed the Inception hype. I remember the hype being there, but I had somehow avoided it. Um, and I, I don't know why I avoided it, because the film's incredible. And if you haven't seen it, you need to go see it. But anyway, uh, I thought I was dreaming when it went 2-0. As you can see, a rebound from the free kick there. And as I mentioned, we got one more goal to make it 3-0. Late on, 
in the second half and this really sealed it at 3-0. A great performance and we were also missing two centre-backs. As you can see, Borthwick Jackson playing centre-back and the reason for that being is the player who we've of course got on loan from Manchester United uh, can't play against Manchester United so we had to kind of fiddle around our defence a little bit there but that was a 3-0 win and that was a good win and to be fair, it was fairly convincing in terms of the clear-cut chances we actually created. Unfortunately, however, the next two games both 1-0 defeats. The first one came away against Norwich, Josh Murphy grabbing the winner. Looking at the stats, it was a 50-50 game. I felt a tad bit unlucky there. And against Everton, uh, Everton won 1-0, so two away defeats in a row. A little bit disappointing, but both teams are fairly solid. As you can see, Harry Yan grabbing the Man of the Match award. However, it wasn't enough. Everton ran out winners, and they did dominate the game for the most part. But Harry Ann's been the top performer so far this year. He's actually got the best average rating in the league. Which for a centre-back who's not getting a load of goals or assists, that he's just been incredible putting in tackles. You can see here in the league, 10 tackles a game. Um, yeah, he, he, he's doing work for us, basically. Um, really sticking his foot in. And he's been a fantastic little player for us so far this year. As you can see, Kuwaku is injured, which is a little bit of a concern because it does mean that Craig Mullen's coming in today. Not, not that I'm concerned about Craig Mullen, but just, I don't know, I don't like my goalkeepers getting injured because it doesn't happen often. But Kuwaku's had a f fair few in his time, so I don't know how injury prone he might be. But it, yeah, it means Craig Mullen, the man who's played a game in every division for us, is going to make a Premier League debut here. He's a good player for Championship side, so hopefully he can step up to the occasion, I guess. Um... Obviously, been at the club a long time, not really improved in the last year. I think he's kind of at his peak, I guess, in terms of how good he's ever going to be, which is a shame, really, but obviously Kuwaku is a good replacement. So anyway, um, just a quick look at the league table. Obviously, we've played six games. We've won three, drawn one, and lost two. The two defeats coming in our last two games, so we had a good start to the year. And uh, obviously we play Sunderland today on a Monday night, so everyone else has played more games than us. A win here could potentially see us move up to 5th, or even 4th on goal difference, which would be crazy. Um, but obviously we've got to take this one game at a time, but we've had a very, very good start. Uh, granted, our opening fixtures could have been a lot nastier to us. Obviously we've got um, West Ham, who are doing okay on the save. We've got Brighton coming up, we've got Forest coming up as well, who will probably be in the next live com. Uh, and then we can have a tough run in. We've got City, Liverpool, Arsenal and Chelsea in five games and Newcastle in between as well, which isn't going to be easy away from home. And it's worth noting our end of season run in is City, Liverpool, Newcastle, Arsenal, Chelsea. So ideally, I need to have the 38 points that I kind of set as a target by the 17th of April. Otherwise, we're going to be not enjoying the end of season because uh, that is a horrific run of fixtures. But it does give me a chance to maybe pull myself away from that trailing pack earlier, uh, kind of in the season, and maybe not have such a squeaky bum time end to the season. But anyway, we need to turn things around. We've only won one of our last five. We're playing Sunderland today at the Dripping Pan. Um, our average attendance at our stadium has been kind of fill, full every single game, which has been great. Um, we're going to go with pretty much the team that we've been playing with for the most part this year. Um, Mijelovic is coming back into the side. Obviously, club record transfer. Only £3.4 million. And he's performed pretty well. Obviously, he got sent off. But when you consider that despite being sent off, his average rate is still 7.4. That gives you an idea of how well he has actually been playing. Anyway, we'll submit our team here. Sunderland, one of the kind of relegation rivals, I guess. They're in 17, so they've done okay. They've won two games so far this year. But um, hopefully we can just get a win against them and, I don't know, uh, pull away even further from that lower end of the group. Obviously, we've had a very kind start to the season, as I mentioned, and we need to capitalise on, on that as best as we can. So, yeah, we'll see how we get on here. But uh, Rolando Aaron's coming back into the squad is great news for us. Um, my, my assistant's starting to want to drop him a little bit, but I'm persisting with him. Sonogo in midfield's been playing pretty well. Obviously, last episode, I called him the Charlie Adam of Lewis. Um, he's not scored, I don't think, since that first game, so hopefully he can get a few more. Um, and let's switch back into 2D with the 3D highlights, because I'm a 2D kind of guy. People often ask why I like 2D. There's a few reasons. Um, firstly, I prefer it for being able to see the shape of either team. 
uh, throughout a game, which it doesn't matter so much in live comms because I only play with key highlights. But the other thing is just purely force of habit. Like I've been using T two D since Championship Manager two thousand and four, and yeah, it's it's just what I'm used to and what my personal preference is, I guess. But anyway, looking at the stats, it's a fairly fifty fifty game. Hopefully we can maybe pull away because we are at home. We need to take advantage of being at home. An X strand is going to be sent off. That is good news. But uh, yeah, obviously to stay up in the Premier League, you need to kind of build a fortress at home. And I'm hoping that we're going to be able to turn the dripping pan into a bit of a fortress uh, this year. Obviously Sunderland, a man down now. We really, really need to get some points from this game. More so free, especially with them being... A man down, so I'm going to tell the players I'm far from pleased. I want them to get fired up. I want them to be, what's the word? I want them to feel challenged. I want them to feel as if they really need to step it up in the second half. And that is great closing down by Allen. I was thinking that we were going to score straight from kickoff, and the the team talk was going to work a treat, but that hasn't kind of been the case, unfortunately. So I'm actually going to make a tactical change, and the change I'm going to make is I'm going to make Sonogo an advanced playmaker set to attack. I uh, want him to push forward that little bit more. I'm also going to up the tempo. And we're going to go with more direct passing. We we are obviously going back to one more attacking 4-4-2 system for the most part. It is also the system I used against United to get the 3-0 win. Oh, we've got a chance here. Ihi Nacho with the header from a set piece. Aaron's with a real ball of quality. And Kelechi there just uses his aerial ability. And that sees us move to fourth. Now, obviously, we can't get too far ahead of ourselves. But that's a fine ball in, and Ihi Nacho leaps like a gazelle and just ploughs that goalwards. And that is very good news for us, because we need to win. We need to win, obviously. Gone a little bit more direct, a little bit more attacking in this second half. They are down a man, Sunderland. So the more they push at us, the more they're going to leave themselves exposed at the back. Right now, it looks like they've just got no one in the final third, and they're playing with maybe... I want to say maybe four midfielders and then one attacking midfielder behind. Oh, Lewis has got a knock. Send him off, ref. Send him off. Oh, wow. Okay, he has sent him off. Sunderland down to nine men. Well, this has got very weird. <laughs> I guess they've lost their tempers. I don't know. Just frustrated. It's a bit of a bizarre situation. I guess Sunderland in real life have a reputation for getting a few red cards. So I guess it's accurate. But, um, wow, I don't think I've ever seen two red cards in a live com. Like I've seen it a fair few times in FM, but it doesn't happen that often. Go on, Kelechi, Sonogo, Aaron's ball in. Oh, there we go. Lewis at the second time of asking. That's his fifth of the season. That's a good goal. It was nicely worked in the build-up play. I thought Lewis had fluffed his lines when he missed the initial shot. However, uh, he, he did bury it at the second time of asking on his weaker foot. I don't know who the centre-back was there. Now Jock, Jack Rodwell's injured. Well, all the stereotypes about Sunderland and a few of their players are happening. If Joe Allen now gets sent off, mental, mental, three red cards. I don't know what's happened. Right, <laughs> um, Matthew Lewis can play centre back, uh, centre back, centre mid. So that's not actually that bad. So we'll just go with that basic change. It's now ten v nine, but we are winning two 0 So I guess there's that. Uh, Lewis has taken a knock. Let's just let's just take him off and be safe. Bring on Suso off the bench. Um, Going to bring off on Thompson as well for Sonogo, who hasn't had the best game of his career. And um, with 10 minutes left, if we can just hold out for 2-0 now, that would be absolutely fine. Uh, obviously, a big win. Good for our goal difference as well to get two goals. Um, and obviously, just a good kind of continuation, I guess, of our good form so far this year. Um, looking like the result is pretty much sealed now. Um, so that's going to be another win. Another win. And that's two out of two in live comms. Obviously, we beat Stoke before. Now we're beating Sunderland. Um Things are looking pretty good for us, I guess, so far this year. I said 38 points is the target, and right now we are kind of way on the way to that with 13 points from our first seven. But anyway, guys, that is going to wrap things up for me. Uh, thank you for watching. If you did enjoy the video, of course, smash the like button. If you've got any comments with regards to this episode or any episode whatsoever or anything FM, leave it down in the comments. And other than that, it is me, Jack, and I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.